So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I really, uh, this, my name is Anthony Donovan, uh, calling from New York, and I really want to welcome anyone from around the world or, and here who are listening in. This was to be an informal discussion. Originally, <clears throat> I want to thank uh, Ambika Deb, Dr. Ambika Deb, for uh, introducing me through her daughter, Kritika, and uh, her, her husband, uh, introducing me to Naranjan Bos Bosniet if I'm saying it correctly, uh, who I found, Bosnia, who I found out has a deep interest in, we have a shared deep interest. So this has led to a number of conversations. And uh, I have a dear colleague uh, in the United States who I've done a lot of work with, uh, Tim and Wallace and his wife, Vicki, who have a fantastic uh, organization in sight, which we'll talk about more um, as we come along. And uh, I was introduced to Kamal, Shrishta through uh, Naranjan. I really welcome you. I'll do a little bit more of an introduction as each of us speak. Um, but I just want to welcome everyone and I want to thank uh, Dr. Deb and Kritika and Nichelle uh, for the introduction and then making this Zoom happen. So each, each of you know that Nepal uh, is in the right centered next to China, Pakistan and India, three nuclear weapon states, as well as long-term good friends. My brother's been going to Nepal since 1981 of Americans and uh, we have long-term relations and we of course are a mighty nuclear weapon state. So you really are really in the center of things. And we have this amazing treaty that's come before us through the work, through actually many decades of work and sacrifice by many people. Uh, and we finally, after years of work, have gotten this tremendous treaty, which will speak more of each of us. But uh, January 22nd, this treaty, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons goes into effect. And uh, we really want to support, all of us, I think, really want to support Nepal in which, uh, face the challenges and the questions and the doubts and the concerns and support you in any way we can. So that was the motivation of, of getting started here. Um, so that's perhaps enough for me. And I, I, I like to, uh, I'll throw the ball over uh, to Dr. Uh, Naranjan uh, Busnet, who uh, I'll just say a few words and not your full bio. Uh, we, we'll try to get the bios into the chat. I for, Forgive me, we could not get everything we wanted to into the chat right away, but perhaps by the end of uh, this <laughs> week. But uh, Dr. Naranjan Bosnet is the president of the Lumbini Research Center for Understanding and Peace in Kathmandu. He's a former ambassador of Nepal to Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Uh, was a representative of Nepal to the first committee of the UNGA and to the NPT, NPT extension, the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty Extension Conference in 1995. Um, so I, I won't go on with more, but let's start with you and I'll, I'll get to the other bios as we turn to each other. But I wanted a few words from you, Naranjan, just about why you're here and, and what you look forward to in this uh, little discussion we're about to have. And thank you, it's great. Uh, Thank you, Anthony, uh, for introducing me. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, you know, as per the locations, uh, welcome to everybody in this uh, in this webinar. And I would like to say that uh, I was interested in it because uh, from the very beginning I was thinking of these uh, nuclear weapons and how dreadful they are. And then I have, uh, I have listened to the horror stories from Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And all these uh, things made me think about, uh, like, like you, you people, uh, think about uh, how to you know, uh, prohibit all these deadly weapons, uh, you know, which can be used at any time against the human beings. So this was uh, how I was, uh, you know, interested. And then when I was posted in New York as first secretary, 
from my mission to the United Nations, Nepal's mission to the United Nations. At that time, I happened to represent my country in the first committee, which is called Disarmament and Political Committee of the United Nations General Assembly. So I represented about two to three years in that committee. And I came to know so many inside stories about all these uh, you know, weapons and how they can be controlled. Uh, we, we were talking about chemical and biological weapons also in those forums. And in the United Nations, there are so many other forums like uh, Conference on Disarmament, which is in Geneva, and Advisory Board on Disarmament Matters, Disarmament Commission, which is also in Geneva, UN Institute for Disarmament Research, that is called uh, in short UNIDIR. So these, all these, uh, you know, the, uh, the institutions are there to discuss about uh, the nuclear disarmament. So uh, let us talk about PTBT and then PTBT, uh, you know, banned uh, <clears throat> test of nuclear weapons in atmosphere and underwater, but it did not ban underground tests. So uh, uh, then NPT came, NPT actually legalized all five nuclear weapons state who had exploded the bomb before 1st January 1967. So these all five countries, uh, they are US, USSR, UK, France, and China. They became, uh, as per the treaty itself, they became the nuclear weapon state. And then after that, in 1974, in Rajasthan, India exploded a bomb that they gave the name Smiling Buddha. And uh, this, uh, wow. they said, yeah, that was actually, I didn't like the name Smiling Buddha because Buddha was for peace. So uh, uh, the, that, that they call it PNE, Peaceful Nuclear Explosion. And then, uh, then after that, uh, uh, in 1998, again, India exploded five nuclear bombs in Pokhran, which is a desert in Rajasthan, desert in Rajasthan. This, uh, uh, by this, they have said that we have exploded the weapon grade, nuclear weapons. So they have become a, a nuclear weapon state. And then after two, three weeks, that is on 28th of July, 1998, Pakistan exploded similar five uh, bombs. And then it came uh, North Korea in 2006. And then Israel, Israel has not yet declared itself as a nuclear weapon state, uh, you know, uh, by the government. But everybody knows that it has got a nuclear weapon. It has some nuclear weapons. So now uh, these are nine countries. Uh, now I talk about a uh, little bit about CTBT, if you have, if you permit me. Actually, C you know, uh, okay, uh, we want to get to the present time. What Nepal, uh, what Nepal is thinking about the TPNW, primarily. So yeah, we'll let's we'll do a short roundup okay. of that if you wish. Well, but yeah. Okay. So uh, after that, you know, from uh, in June there was a there was a webinar like this, and then I talked about uh, you know. Nepal, if it could uh, ratify within 50 countries. So it was my, my views that Nepal should be inside the 50 countries. 50 countries, why? Because out of 193 countries, if 50 countries will ratify, it go into force. It right. goes into force, right. the TPNW, the prohibition of nuclear weapons. So this treaty, uh, as you, as everybody knows, uh, you know that uh, it was uh, voted in 2017, and uh, 122 countries voted uh, for it, and Nepal was one of them. And Nepal immediately signed, but Nepal has not ratified yet. So I was thinking that uh, Nepal should be uh, must be inside uh, 50 countries. But what happened? Uh, Nepal. Uh, has not ratified yet, and uh, there are already 50 countries now, last being Honduras, which ratified on the 24th of October, which is the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. Now it will go, as uh, Anthony has said, that from 22nd of January, it will go into effect. 
uh, now uh, uh, we have uh, sensitized uh, so many people, including parliamentarians also in Nepal, that uh, they should push for uh, ratifying it. And I have contacted uh, some people in Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Nepal uh, who are uh, very much, uh, you know, uh, occupied with this. And our, uh, uh, our ratif ratifying process is like this. First, Ministry of Foreign Affairs will make a proposal. And through the Minister of Foreign Affairs, it goes to the cabinet uh, of the government of Nepal. And the cabinet approves it. And then it goes to the parliament for discussion. And after the discussion, parliament ratifies. And then our foreign minister can sign the you know, document of ratification. This is our process. So I have been uh, with. Uh, Kamal, I have been trying to, you know, sensitize many people and, uh, you know, former ministers are about to, uh, you know, listen to our, uh, uh, this webinar also. So this is also a, so some sort of uh, sensitizing the people in Nepal that we should be going for the ratification as soon as possible. So I have been doing that. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, thank, thank you. And just very quickly, where are we at right now? Has, it been, has the proposal been made and is it to the cabinet yet or not yet? No. Uh, I, the people, people in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are having meetings and they are, they are discussing about it. So they haven't uh, made a proposal. To, just to make a proposal to the cabinet. Okay. Because I know your foreign minister was here last year uh, for the, at the UN and, and said that you were gonna start the process of ratification. So I was wondering where it was at. Thank you. Um, let's, what, what we'll do is we'll go to Tim and Wallace, who will introduce, and then we'll go to uh, Dr. Kamal Shreshta. Uh, okay. So uh, I'm gonna, Dr. Tim and Wallace, Tim and, uh, is the executive director along with, of nuclearband.us. Uh, Vicki uh, Ellison, uh, runs nuclearband.us. Tim is the author of a book, Disarming the Nuclear Argument. Um, he's also the author of a tremendous uh, report called Warheads to Windmills, which was shared with our Congress. Uh, he holds a PhD in peace studies uh, from Bradford U University. And he's served as in, for a long time, many decades, I won't get into it, with many uh, as ex executive directors for a nonviolent peace force, uh, was also a director of National Peace Council in the UK. But uh, and it's got a wonderful website, very informative, and has taken a lot of actions to help support this treaty, uh, get the ratifications it needs, and also to help US citizens understand exactly what's going on with the treaty. So Tim, and a, a few words from you and, and Vicky, your, uh, your co-conspirator in all this. God bless you both. And Vicky as well. Few words. Well, Vicky would could talk a bit about what we're doing here in the U.S. Um, in support of the treaty. I would um, thank thank you, Anthony, and and thank you, uh, Dr. Bazliat and um, Kamal. I'm, I'm very honored to be part of this. We're we're uh, we're we're you know glad to help Anthony in his endeavors, and um, very excited to be uh, uh, hearing about what's happening in Nepal. I just wanted to. Um, you know, with Anthony, we've been working over the years now on um, this treaty uh, entry into force and keep keeping the momentum going. Um, and we are very excited about Nepal for a number of reasons. Um, Anthony mentioned, you know, how strategically important you are in the middle of, of India and China and all these other nuclear powers and, and Pakistan, as you mentioned. Um, but uh, we, uh, we, we're we doing a, a webinar tomorrow night about the treaty and, and its impact on the US. And one of the things that I have been looking at is um, of all the countries that have signed the treaty so far, um, almost all of them are already inside a nuclear weapons free zone. You know, there's a nuclear weapons free zone in Latin America, there's one in Africa, there's one in the South Pacific, there's one in Central Asia. And um, Nepal is not in one of those at the moment, and um, it ma which makes it all the more powerful and valuable for a country like Nepal to actually be part of this treaty. 
Um, we have been in discussion with um, our colleagues at the UN about the timeline. I mean, I know you mentioned, uh, you know, it would, be, it would have been great to be part of the first 50 countries to ratify the treaty. A lot of countries were trying hard to do that and, and missed, missed that deadline. But there is a, a deadline coming up, which I just wanted to alert you to in case you can talk to some of your colleagues in the, in the Nepalese government about this. The, the, the treaty, as, it, as, as many of you know, specifies that after, uh, after it enters into force, they, there must be the first review conference within one year. And there's now discussion about that probably taking place in November of next year. So it has to be within a year of the entry into force. And um, to, to take part in that conference and to be one of the state's parties, a country has to have ratified the treaty 90 days before, before that. So that's three months before November. So that's what, um, October, so August, you know, sort of Hiroshima day next year is the kind of, is kind of a hard deadline for countries like Nepal to get their ratification through in order to be able to participate in the first review conference when a lot of important discussions and decisions will be made about how this treaty goes forward, how it's implemented in different countries, how they interpret the assistance clause, which is the thing that we're most excited about here in the US because it's putting pressure on the companies around the world who are involved in the nuclear weapons, even though the countries don't have nuclear weapons themselves. And of course, Nepal has a role to play there as, as do many others. So um, that's what I wanted to share. It's, it's exciting uh, developments. There's a lot going on. We are working very hard on the US. Obviously the US is a, is a long way away from, from um, uh, the peaceful policies of Nepal, but we're working on it. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> Everything we do in the United States, we do for a couple of reasons. One reason is to lay the groundwork for uh, our country to sign and ratify this treaty. The other reason we do it is as an expression of solidarity with all the other countries in the world that are signing and ratifying this treaty. And we don't want people to think that Americans are just a big uh, bunch of nuclear weapons loving uh, <laughs> crazy people. You know, we, we want everybody to know that in America, there's a movement. Uh, there are a lot of citizens here who would love to see the end of the nightmare of nuclear weapons once and for all. So the things that we're doing in this country, uh, we're working on legislation at the national level at the state level and at the city level. Our own town has divested from nuclear weapons um, and there's legislation at, at the top uh, with a, a bill in the house that was uh, submitted by representative Eleanor Holmes Norton, um, which is very beautiful. It um, talks about totally dismantling the nuclear weapons industry and then taking the money and the brain power, you know, the, the scientists and their expertise and shifting all that towards green technologies that address the climate crisis um, and other pressing human needs. Um, very much in line with the report that we wrote last year that Anthony mentioned, Warheads to Windmills. Um, so we are right now working on getting a lot more legislators to sign the ICANN pledge to support the treaty. Um, we are doing educational work to raise awareness about the treaty. And uh, we are trying to connect with other movements within our country, the climate movement, justice movements of various kinds. Um, and we're uh, trying to help people divest not only at the level of cities and states. Uh, by the way, New York City is on the verge of divesting it's pension funds from nuclear weapons. Anthony knows a lot about that because he works on it. <laughs> and we're very excited about that being being in the pipeline. You were, um, part, of hmm? you were part of it too. Yeah, so well, we're yeah, getting to this good. back. So I'll speak about that a little bit. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Good, good. So um, we're working on, on divestment also at the level of individuals and of banks and of, of investment firms and um, universities. At universities and hospitals. <laughs> Um, you know, churches, faith communities, um, and um, 
we're also um, uh, going to be doing a lot in this country, all, all around the country to celebrate January 22nd. Uh, I was just on, the, on a call making a plan for an action at a um, nuclear weapons company right here in our city um, on, the, on the 22nd, letting them know, okay, you're in violation now of this international treaty. Um, so again, everything we do, we do, um, you know, in part in solidarity with you. And it's such an honor to be part of this conversation with, with Nepal. So thank you so much for including us. Again, for getting up at this hour of the morning and, and getting with us. Thank you so much, Vicki and, and um, Tim, and we'll get right back to you. Um, so Dr. Kamal Shreshta, um, uh, a moment. Uh, I'll just uh, briefly, it's a pioneer nuclear scientist who's been instrumental in the formation of national nuclear policy in 2007. Um, advocated sufficiently for Nepal to acquire membership in the IAEA in 2008. From 2007 to 2015, you've been a member of the Nuclear Steering Committee of the Government of Nepal. You've also been founder and president of the Nuclear Society of New Nepal and actively participating in the last two decades in the month of August to commemorate the World Hiroshima and Nagasaki Day, uh, which uh, organized by the Afro-Asian People's Solidarity Organization of Nepal to Vicky's point of solidarity with the rest of the world. And I understand you're a strong believer in the Treaty of, of the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. So I know there's much more to say about you, but um, I'll try to get your uh, bio up in, as well. But thank you for joining us. It's a real honor to have you and the floor is yours for a moment, yeah. Oh, thank you for the nice kind words about me. Uh, at the outset, let me just uh, acknowledge some of the participants from Nepal and abroad. Uh, I'm a president of a society known as Nuclear Society of Nepal. And I'm glad that two of the executive members of my society, Dr. Budram Sa and Dr. Kanchan Adhikari has joined us. And again, I'm, I'm glad to find that former master Mohan Loani uh, is also present as well as former administrator uh, Uday Nepali and, and so on, and uh, Dipinder Purush Thakal and all, and the members of Nuclear Society, of, uh, my former students like Dr. Bishnu Bastkota, Dr. Ramji Kandel from Canada and Japan or America, wherever they are just now, etc. Welcome you for all of us. And thank you for giving me this uh, opportunity to express myself in this forum. Uh, let me go back to 19... Uh, 62, when uh, different secretary Matt Mara came up with a fantastic word, MAD syndrome. So it has caught my attention right from that day. Hey, this nuclear bomb is certainly uh, mutually assured destruction. You destroy me, I destroy you. So are you ready? Of course, I am not ready. So I have been telling once in a while that it is because of the nuclear bomb Though the nuclear bomb had a very bad start in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but it is because of the nuclear bomb, the world has not come up with a third great world war. To think of third great world war is impossible because of mad syndrome. And vis a vis, I also like to say, I, I try to get it, but uh, I've been told that Prime Minister Nik uh, Khrushchev once was, one was, was asked a question in New York, when he was attending one of the UN sessions after the so-called Cuban missile crisis, crisis, that what do you think, Mr. Prime Minister, about the third great world war? Mankind almost, we almost have had a third great world war because of nuclear uh, uh, Cuban nu missile crisis. Then he said, well, gentlemen, I do not know about the I can't say much about the third great world war, but I think what I am sure is there will be no fourth great world war if third takes place. So these are the some of the, uh, and uh, some more are the points that has been drawing my attention. And recently I came across yet another uh, saying that if there is a nuclear war, however small it could be, like in our neighborhood, 
if there is a war between Pakistan and India, the arc rivals, then because of the uh, Indian Army, Air Force, etc., uh, very big in numbers, the chances for Pakistan to use a tactical nuclear weapon in the battlefield is quite high. And India has warned, even if you use that, we are going to retaliate heavily. And again, another things that caught my attention was that India has declared no first use of a nuclear bomb, NFU, so also China. But Pakistan says, has not said anything about NFU. And Pakistan rather would say, we reserve the right to defend ourselves with tactical nuclear weapons. So that is the scenario that has uh, been very important for Nepal. Uh, at least China in the north, Pakistan and uh, India in the south. So I'm glad that the government of Nepal is taking interest in uh, NPT to begin with and CTBT as well as uh, uh, so-called the TNW uh, also, uh, also. And what I'm uh, surprised is, see, I'm a career scientist, so this it is just my interest. So when I have to speak before diplomats like uh, Dr. Bustnet or Mr. Ambassador Mohan Lohini and so on, uh, I have to sigh away a bit. All the same, I venture to say that these are some of the issues that has that has to be taken in a national scale, so that we have to do something regarding our peace uh, diplomacy. After all. Gautam Buddha was born in Nepal, and if Nepal takes peace initiative, I think that is quite appropriate. So peace initiative to denuclearize the whole world could be just wonderful achievement for Nepal. So having said that, in Nepal, uh, we are glad that the government is somehow getting conscious about it. And we have the Nuclear Society of Nepal has been architect in asking the government to make a nuclear policy. Uh, and we, be, we made the first draft for the government. And now, by now, we have a national nuclear policy of the government of Nepal. And having had a national nuclear policy, so we said, now, why don't you implement the policy? Mm -hmm. So how do we implement it? Uh, and Nepal is a very poor country, and nuclear or nuclear issues are very expensive at all. Then we. Uh, encourage government to join IAEA. And after joining IAEA, we have been getting lots of uh, support, assistance, training, etc., and even the, the donation of equipment. And IAEA is entertaining a couple of uh, so called uh, local projects. For example, Dr. Budram Sa, who is with a UN flag behind his uh, screen, uh, is, has, is handling one project. And there is the Dr. Kanchan Adhikari, he's, he's handling uh, IAEA projects uh, for medical purposes and so on. So that way we have been successful in drawing the attention of the government for Nepal to enter a nuclear age for all round development. And vis a vis, we are also now slowly asking the government to be interested in this disarmament issues too. So that is how we're trying to draw the attention of the government and the administrators and the policy makers and the planners to be uh, in this world where the MAD syndrome, though it is a little less, less active, but with uh, India and Pakistan in our neighborhood, we, never, we, we can't sleep soundly. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You can't sleep soundly. Well, neither can we over here. And, and that's so we have each other is, is my thought. And as Vicky once again said, our solidarity. Um, so now we're at the phase where we can ask each other questions. I, I did, you just celebrated December 10th, Human Rights Day, correct? In Nepal, we all, we all did. But I think there was some uh, marches and some way of, um, Celebrating, is that correct, uh, Niranjan? Human Rights Day on December 10th? Yeah, there, uh, there is one, uh, one organization called uh, Human Rights and right. uh, you know, right. uh, Peace Society. 
It, and uh, uh, they had gone to all the embassies uh, of nine countries, who, right. which are uh, uh, nuclear weapon states, right. and uh, they are, uh, you know, demanding to, you know, dismantle all the nuclear weapons and have a peaceful world. That's so what that I wanted to ask their, you. Oh. Yeah, that was their, uh, their their intention. Thank you. So, so the human rights they included nuclear weapons because. Uh, that, that's great in their demands or, or in their requests. Very yes. powerful. Yes. Eleanor Roosevelt here is one of our great Americans. And she's pretty much helped get Human Rights Day started here at the UN. And uh, we have, so uh, th thank you for honoring that day. And I'm really happy to hear that nuclear weapons are part of this, the human rights of, of the world, of everyone on the planet. Uh, so um, thank you. Do either of you two have a question for us? I can, I have a few, but uh, would you like to? Would yeah, you like I, to? Have a, I have one question to you. Now, uh, you know, the, you have a new US president who will be taking vote on Hopefully. 20th of January. So it's uh, almost uh, more or less uh, one month from now. So, uh, uh, what will uh, what do you think? What will happen regarding this? Because uh, President Obama at that time in 2009, he had chaired the UN Security Council, and there was one resolution uh, calling for you know uh, prohibiting all nuclear weapons, and he had chaired. So you know Joe Biden has been eight year uh, vice president of uh, President Obama. So uh, what do you think? Uh, are you very uh, hopeful, hopeful uh, <laughs> that the US uh, policy will take a turn? OK, Tim and un uh, I have, uh, unmute I have, Tim. I have, I have, let me, oh, can, yeah, I, okay. can I speak, please? Well, let um, me add uh, my voice okay. to uh, what just Ambassador Nirendra said. You know, he, he was referring to President Obama. And all of us know that one year after he was sworn in as president, he bagged Nobel Prize for Peace, Obama, President Obama. You yeah. know, that was really something uh, the, uh, the other countries had not expected. So President Obama, we think, uh, is committed to um, declaring the world a non-nuclear world, you say. I think his commitment to dismantling nuclear weapons remains uh, unchanged. Is it so? Can I? <laughs> uh, well, they're very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you can, um, uh, and Vicky uh, and, and uh, Tim, and would you like it? I have my opinion, but go for it. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, uh, we're not we're not placing huge hopes um, on on President Biden uh, in the immediate term because he's got to first of all get the virus under control and get the economy back on track, and he's already made it very clear that his other priorities are to address the, the dreadful legacy of racism that Trump has, has unleashed on this country, as well as the climate crisis, which is, um, which is at the moment very much more on people's minds than, than the nuclear weapons issue. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have, he, he, ha he, he is, you know, following the the footsteps of, of um, Obama and Obama left a very unfinished agenda on the nuclear weapons issue. A lot of people think he should give the Nobel Peace Prize back unless he does more. <laughs> and we're working, we're working on him to, to come out, you know, now that he's, you know, the former president, um, he, you know, I think there's some possibility that he will come out in favor of, of nuclear weapons abolition and uh, TPNW. Um, we need to, we need to do a lot more work on him uh, to convince him of that. But you know he's he's in a position where he's now an, an elder statesman, and they often come out with more more um, radical ideas than they did when they were when they were in office under all those constraints. So we're we're hopeful. We we actually have launched a national campaign here to get people to write to President Biden, President Elect Biden, before he becomes president. Over the, we, you know, it's already started getting people all over the country writing letters and emails to him, urging him, you know, saying, you know, we don't expect you to, um, 
sign the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapon on your second day in office, but we want you to know that on your second day in office, this treaty comes into effect around the world and that there are not just 50 countries, you know, demonstrating their firm commitment to this, but there are many, many other more countries in the wings. There are huge majorities of popular public opinion in other countries, including in this country, wanting uh, the, the United States and the other nuclear countries to, to take a stand on this. And, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to put pressure on him and we're going to hope that he at least shifts the, 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 um, the, 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 um, the policies in the US. As you know, there was this letter that just went out um, a couple of months ago from the Trump administration asking countries that had already ratified the treaty to unratify, which is unprecedented and unbelievably um, illegal, among other things. And, um, and if and, anybody else had done it, we would have been shocked, but it was so <laughs> typical. But that, that alone sets, a, sets a, a, um, an opportunity for, for President Biden to actually mm -hmm. come out and, and, and denounce that and to say, you know, we're moving in a different direction. He's certainly much, much more committed to multilateralism, to the UN, to treaties, to working with other countries more collaboratively. And he's got to demonstrate that. And one of the ways that he might be pushed into doing that is to say, you know, we, we, we're not going to behave like this to countries that want to sign a treaty like this. And, you know, we're not ready to sign it right now, but we, we're not going to stop other countries from signing and ratifying it. Um, we know that he supports the Iran deal, going back to the Iran deal. He supports maintaining the, the new start deal with Russia. You know, he's going to, he's going to take steps to encourage the world that we, that we're back on track, but we need to keep pushing him. And of course, I won't say that Nepal ratifying the treaty would, would, would make the difference, but I mean, it's part of it, you know, seeing these other countries standing up and saying, you know, we're not, we're not gonna, um, we don't want these weapons anymore. We're done with it, you know, please do something about it. That's a, that's a strong statement. And if Nepal and many of the other countries that signed or even voted for the treaty will now stand up and ratify it, that will make a big difference here in the US. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tim. And, and if I can add on uh, a moment, <clears throat> for, uh, Obama, uh, President Obama, did get a Nobel Peace Prize for saying he wanted a nuclear-free world. And, and if the whole world really rejoiced at hearing that. Um, but what he did, because the industry is so strong, and this is why, thank you for your sentiment, uh, Nepal, but um, our industry really kicked in after that. And uh, he wound up signing all the directives to build new nuclear weapons and new nuclear facilities, President Obama did. That's before um, Trump got into office. Uh, actually, this is why I did my documentary, the documentary, Good Thinking, Those Who've Tried to Halt Nuclear Weapons Five Years Ago, was because of that um, unknown fact that Obama did go ahead to, to build a new new nuclear weapons, which many of us advocates are, are really, um, we're, it's tragic. Um, I want to get back to um, Tim and uh, the war heads to windmills is a report that he put out a year ago. And it's, it's just to say a moment about why Nepal, why it's really important. You talked about being a poor country and you are surrounded by people who are uh, helping you in a way you get help from Pakistan, India, China, you have trade with them and the US. And I know recently we had our officials in Kathmandu trying to support um, you uh, uh, with non-proliferation and getting you up to speed with their our, uh, thoughts about non-proliferation. So I, you have a lot of pressure on you from at least the four of us to stand up and to stand up and say, no, we, we want to be nuclear free is to me extremely courageous, would be tremendously inspiring for all of us activists here around the world, but especially here in New York and, and in the United States. I, I, I agree, it would really help us here. And we would herald that because you're in a very particular situation 
needing something from all four of these countries and having trade uh, with us. Uh, you're in a really unusual predicament. Um, but it, a little bit about your, um, the warheads, the wind, windmills, uh, transferring the money, the vast amount of money that we spend on this industry, all of us, China, Pakistan, India, the world, and what we need the money for. Uh, and that's what this report was about. But a moment on that, Timon, if you would. Um, um, well, the the um, I mean, this is a this is the the picture of of the kind of you know these are the black and white uh, industry jobs in the U.S. Tens of thousands of them making nuclear weapons, maintaining them, developing new ones. And these are what these jobs could be doing, not tens of thousands, but millions of jobs working on uh, wind power projects, you know, research on batteries, on, on electric planes, on um, high speed rail, all these things. And of course, globally, that situation is, is multiplied because we have such dire needs out there for, for, for um, not just, if you can find the one to them. Um, um, you know, we're, there's, there's enormous opportunities to convert these industries. And as Vicky was saying, you know, the, the technical scientific skills um, that are being squandered on weapons of mass destruction and developing new ones instead of on meeting these really important urgent needs. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know if, um, if that meets your... You yeah, Andy, <laughs> Anthony, but, <laughs> but just the reason the, the amounts, the trillions of dollars that we spend on this industry, not in the United States alone, never mind China, Pakistan, and India. When you need, when you well know that we could really be doing lots of other wonderful things with trade and with our scientific know how, especially you, Dr. Uh, Shrestha, you know, with uh, your, your nuclear scientific mind you know uh, you, we, we could be applying this to other useful things that we need in in our life so just to point that out um yeah any other thoughts naranjan come on yeah uh, i would like to just add that uh, in nepal we had a culture of peace already and in 1975 when we had monarchy uh, there was a, there was a declaration that Nepal be declared a zone of peace, and 116 countries have already you know recognized, including the U.S. had recognized that Nepal be declared a zone of peace. So uh, we have this culture you know going on, but it could not happen because of uh, one of our neighboring countries uh, did not uh, recognize us. So uh, uh, that is, uh, you know, the people are still remembering that declaration uh, right now. And uh, some people were talking about, some countries were talking about when we talked about peace, they were talking about uh, why not to make whole of Asia or uh, South Asia declared a nuclearized, uh, the denuclearized zone like other uh, denuclearized zone uh, today with the, with the treaties like ASEAN. ASEAN, uh, you know, like uh, uh, is a, a neighbor in terms of regional, uh, regional organization. So that was, uh, they were talking, but uh, actually it didn't happen. So that just, I wanted to put forward uh, that uh, view of uh, uh, zone of peace. Thank you. Are you, are you, are you feeling... Okay, I just had a can question. I, can I say something about uh, uh, contribution of President Obama once again? No, during his tenure of office, he signed this uh, nuclear deal with Iran. Really, it was, it was something unprecedented. Yes. But unfortunately, after President yes. Trump uh, came, came into power, the whole thing was, uh, uh, let us say, left out, you know. He, he, he changed the scenario and again imposed sanctions on Iran. So, you know, it was. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. I, we agree. We agree. And we're hopefully we're going to go back to that area. And thank you very much. 
Um, come on. Oh, did we just mute Anthony? Yeah. Anthony, you got to unmute. Sorry? Anthony, and you have to unmute. We accidentally muted you. Oh, that was good, actually. How long have I been unmuted for? Uh, not been muted. Uh, uh, so I just, uh, I do have a question for Kamal and Niran John. Are you actually feeling, are your compatriots feeling pressure from these large uh, states to not comply with the TPNW and, and the NPT? Are you, are you feeling, are you feeling that pressure somehow? I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, this is a nice question, and <laughs> I, yeah. uh, I have an answer for it because there is no direct pressure as such. Mm -hmm. But then uh, Niranjan will say you that in Nepal is trying to be influenced by big powers, powers, uh, you know, from China and the U.S. Uh, with, with the two initiatives uh, going on in this part of the world, mm -hmm. about which uh, Ambassador Loni is uh, so very versatile. Maybe I will request Ambassador Loni to open up on this. Thank you. Uh, just I, I would like to ask before that uh, is that uh, uh, you are talking about uh, Trump uh, administration writing letters to the countries uh, unratify, uh, you know, even if they have done so, and uh, also the new countries not to ratify. So I think that letter has already come to the government of Nepal also. So that you can you can you can uh, say that uh, we are feeling uh, you know pressure from uh, all sides not to ratify maybe, but I don't know uh, because it is our policy, it is our government, it is our country. So it is uh, us to decide, you know, not other countries to you know, pressurized to us because if our uh, politicians and bureaucrats are really, you know, bold, they can uh, do, uh, you know, in favor of peace, ratifying the treaty. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony, did you know that Dr. Budaram Shah has had his head up for a little while? No, uh, I can't see anyone. Uh, so, uh, uh, we sent you a text. But, okay. okay oh, so you know. so I am not looking at the chat. I'm sorry. Thank you. I will. So go for it. Uh, Dr. Buddha Ram Shah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning from, uh, from Nepal. And so I was listening all my seniors and uh, views on Nepal. And uh, <clears throat> so my, uh, my, my query is, uh, as uh, I'm also been act actively working in this field and uh, participating in CDBT's uh, <clears throat> workshops and so on. So my, my queries is uh, uh, as far as uh, I remember uh, that there is article 14 in uh, for CDBT, article 14. So there is, uh, uh, there must the eight country should ratify and uh, uh, they are, few of them still not signatory even. And th those eight countries should ratify for the complete disarmament or the CTBTO vision or mission to go into force. So what are the strategy? So putting them and uh, to get the uh, uh, in, in early into force, the vision of the CTBT, this country will ratify the treaty. What are the strides is going on? Could you please elaborate on this aspect? Thank you. Okay, anyone? Well, um... Thank you, Dr. Shah. I, I can't uh, on that one. I'm, I'm today. I'm really focused on the uh, this treaty before us, which incorporates and supports the CBT and and the NPT. Uh, so it, it really supports all the everything in those treaties as well. It doesn't uh, push back on those treaties, but really supports them, especially the NPT. One of the 
reasons we have this treaty is because we've really been failing in those treaties, especially the NPT, which says, which made, which made a pact with you, Nepal, and all the other countries, right? That said, if you don't develop nuclear weapons, we will get together and start getting rid of ours. And the nuclear nations have not lived up to their, as you know, we're going ahead with our arms race. So we're violating our, our treaties. Uh, so this treaty now, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons is reaffirming all those commitments we had to the past treaties. And a lot of us advocates here are all fully aware of that. So I, I'm, I'm not an expert on, on, on that treaty itself. Uh, and uh, if you can help me, Vicky, if there are the, uh, other hands that I'm missing or other questions, I apologize to anyone who's been waiting. Um, I haven't been looking at the chat and uh, um, I've been listening to you all, the, the, uh, the panelists. I, I did, if I could, uh, I'll spend just a moment, a little bit more history of what's going on here. Uh, there are a couple maybe on the Zoom, I'm not sure, but we have seven activists who are very dedicated with the Catholic worker movement who have gone to, two of them went to jail yesterday. I accompanied one of them to jail. These are colleagues of mine that have stood up to our nuclear weapon industry here in the United States, uh, trying to expose and let citizens of our country, because our country, the citizens aren't aware really of our nuclear weapon programs and aren't not aware of the tremendous, the trillions of dollars that we spend of our tax money for nuclear weapons. Uh, we don't talk about this in our halls of power. Uh, so it's, that's why this treaty is really important. That's why every country that stands up helps us educate our own. Um, but we have seven people that put their lives on the line, entered a nuclear base in Georgia, putting up signs of a, a banner of Dr. Martin Luther King talking about the three triplets of evil, right? Racism, materialism, and militarism, and put these signs up on, on the nuclear weapon base in Georgia and wrote things like love one another. You come from the land of Buddha, which is another reason why we had this soon. We feel uh, the land of Buddha, the land of his birthplace. We, those of us who've taken a moment to contemplate the Buddha uh, and your great culture and his tremendous wisdom long before Christ knows it's all about compassion and caring for all sentient beings. And it's a tremendous honor actually to be touching base with that land right now. We, on the other hand, we call ourselves a Christian nation. Of course, we're, we're everything here in the United States, but often people like to hold up the fact that, well, we know what Christ's message was, and his message was what my, our colleagues wrote at this naval base. And by the way, they did this action for all humanity, for people around the world, for you in Nepal as well. But they wrote, love one another. That's the teachings of Christ. Love your enemy as thyself. Forgiveness, which has to do with compassion, which is the Buddha's message. So they went to prison. They're doing 10 to 14 months of prison for nonviolent civil disobedience, entering one of our nuclear bases, trying to expose that base and our industry, uh, wake up the American people. People that live just miles from this base have no idea that nuclear weapons are even there. And that's the truth. In China, it's the truth. People don't know where their nuclear weapons are. Pakistan, India, they may be living very close to catastrophe, uh, an accident. And I just, uh, while I'm speaking, uh, Vicky mentioned and Tim and that New York City uh, last year also stood up and our city council, here in the home of Wall Street, by the way, Wall Street is the conduit for all the funds for all our industries that make a large profit off of the nuclear weapon uh, industry. So um, they stood up and said, we wanna support this treaty. Our city council, we have a vast, a majority of our city council said in New York City, the home of Wall Street said, we wanna support this treaty, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. And we wanna support divesting our pension funds 
in New York City, the firemen, the police, the government workers. We want to get our money out of this industry. So these are the kind of actions that are universal. People are starting to think about divestment. You can and uh, we all can. And these are some of the examples. So that is something we do on a local level. As Tim and Vicky said, their town has stood up and done the same. Um, so we, we're working on many of these. Uh, one, one other thing I, that was also mentioned is the coronavirus. And I, I forgot to mention in the beginning that my heart goes out to all of you in Nepal. And, and actually, if you're calling from other countries, this is a, if you've lost anyone or your friends, your family, please, our, our condolences and uh, with everybody. It's very, really serious. It hit us hard here in New York and all around the world. And I understand in Nepal is suffering greatly too. I, I had a question about that. Um, for Nepal, is this, we, we're using the coronavirus here in a way to, to put off many important decisions, but I'm wondering if this is also perhaps setting back your parliament from, uh, and I'm sure it is on some level, from, from taking up the issue of nuclear weapons. Is the immediacy of dealing with the coronavirus, uh, I'm sure it is, is that an issue there? Niran, General Kamal. Yes, Kamal. Thank you. I have, uh, I would appreciate if somebody comments on the development of small nuclear bombs, so-called tactical nuclear bombs, so-called bunker penetration nuclear bombs and all. These are really worrying factors of development of another development in nuclear bombs. Uh, what, what do you think? You, what do you think? You're, you're an expert. What do you, uh, you're worried about it. So am I, but tell me why you're worried about it. Yes, that, that is what, I'm, I'm glad you asked me this question. Uh, yeah. Ask me back this question. The trouble with the nuclear skirmishes, any nuclear event is so dreadful, so alarming that if there, something happens between Karachi and New Delhi, the world cannot sleep in peace because the days of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are gone. The kiloton bombs are gone. These days, everything is in terms of megatons. And when you use megatons, a number of them, Pakistan uh, do have about a little over 100, 130 to 200. India also has 100, 150 or more. So if they try to use these megatons bomb, starting from this little tactical bomb, then you know what the world, world will be. You like it or not, it is not Washington and Moscow that decides. It is even uh, the uh, Islamabad and New Delhi that provokes. And we could end up with a nuclear winter. And once you have a nuclear winter, our agriculture will be destroyed. Hunger will come in the country. And there is all collateral damages. And a whole mankind will suffer from that little teeny weeny, as, as you call it, uh, tactical nuclear bomb. Thank you. I think, thank you. I think we're uh, all. Thank you, Anthony. So I would like yeah. to add in this because uh, now, uh, you know, this proliferation of, uh, you know, arms is going on uh, in our neighborhood also. Like uh, India and Pakistan, they are, uh, you know, trying to make or they have already made some tactical weapons, uh, smaller ones. And they are uh, investing a lot of money in making a triad. They call it triad that is uh, by land, by air, and by water. So they, uh, there are some small, uh, you know, these uh, uh, ships and, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, can be utilized uh, against, against uh, one another. And then uh, I don't know about, you know, they are, they are increasing uh, every year the defense uh, budget, uh, defense budget. Uh, that is what is uh, alarming for us. Thank you. Uh, who are you talking about? The United States? In, uh, a different no, I, I'm talking about uh, India and Pakistan. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. In our neighborhood. Tim and Vicky, any anything? I. Yeah. Yeah. I just you mentioned uh, Naranjan. You mentioned JFK, and I know you love history. But uh, Nepal was in the General Assembly in 1963 when John F. Kennedy came 
into that forum and said, you know, why are we, why are we, why are we competing with Russia, uh, with the Soviet Union at the time? Why aren't we sharing our technologies and doing something like a joint mission to the moon? And he proposed a joint mission to the moon. This is after he, he uh, of course, had success in our country with the test ban treaty, the first test ban treaty, um, which, by the way, was meant to be only a first step. Kennedy felt the test ban treaty was just a first step towards total elimination of nuclear weapons. This was his intention. Shortly after that, he comes to the UN and tells the UN, and if I was in the room, uh, you all were, um, and cheered wildly when he said, why, why, why don't we go to the moon together? Why don't we share this technology for the betterment of humanity? So we have a long history here of people that have really been pushing for this, as we know, uh, Truman, who's the one who gave the go ahead to, to uh, drop those two bombs, those horrific bombs, uh, called up Kennedy and was enthusiastically supporting him uh, to, for the test ban treaty and to keep moving to get rid of nuclear weapons. Uh, a lot of people laud Truman as dropping them, but he really turned around as did uh, Eisenhower, our next great president, um, who really warned us about this industrial complex, which is really led to the buildup of our Cold War and the tremendous waste and the tremendous danger. Anyway, I'm sorry I get off on tangents, but I, I also love history and I love the history of most of our great Americans I can think of from Einstein to Baird Rustin to Dorothy Day. I mentioned Eleanor Roosevelt, but uh, Martin Luther King, uh, Adlai Stevenson, just so many of our greatest Americans stood up to stop this. And we know in our country, we're going to try to wrap up Think of maybe how you can wrap up. But I, and I know in our country, our citizens, by the millions uh, in the 80s, well, well, through the 70s, we had large marches against nuclear weapons. I don't know if you know that, but large marches. I was part of one in 1970 on Wall Street, thousands of us uh, against our military industrial complex, but nuclear weapons was part of that. So this led up to, of course, the huge rally in 1982, which was around the world, which you may have known about, but Americans, US citizens have already stood up and voted with their feet against this industry. And uh, so this is, an, and then we kind of got tricked and fooled. So we're, we're making a comeback now. Anthony, I would like to add one thing. Uh, yes. We got proliferation of nuclear technology. Yes. Uh, if we go to one decade before uh, JFK, that is in 1953, right. uh, Eisenhower, President Eisenhower came to the United Nations, uh, UNGA, and he declared atoms for peace. Right. And that was the beginning of proliferation, actually. Actually, he wanted to stop the proliferation, but right. he provided technology to 20 countries, at least, and he exported some tons of uranium to those countries. And uh, lately, those countries developed nuclear weapons from those uranium and from, from, or from those technology. That was uh, what uh, I wanted to point out. And another thing, you know, the, uh, the people who, uh, you know, developed and who were uh, instrumental in developing uh, nuclear weapons later repented when it was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, like uh, Robert Oppenheimer. He quoted uh, Bhagavad Gita, saying that I am become death, destroying worlds. So that means he was uh, quoting uh, Lord Krishna in Mahabharata when Arjuna went, uh, Arjuna, uh, you know, hesitated to fight with his own brothers, own cousins. Uh, Krishna said that. You know, it is me uh, behind you. So it is uh, myself uh, trying to, you know, kill them. So don't worry and go for war. So that was, uh, that was uh, you know, the narrative Oppenheimer was quoting, uh, you know, and he, when he repented and he said that some people were laughing, some people were crying uh, when the first nuclear bomb was exploded in Los Alamos, New Mexico. 
uh, you know, from the lab. So that I wanted to just to highlight. Thank you. Yeah, Adams for Peace, you're, you're right. And Einstein, who was Oppenheimer's colleague, uh, we know spent the rest of his life trying to stop things and pushing against all militarization of, of something that he helped invent. Um, thank you. Um, maybe a go round because we should wrap. It's been it's 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 over an hour. I I'm sorry, I wasn't keeping track of time too well. But um, maybe let's do a go round, uh, Vicky. If there's any other out, uh, questions out there uh, uh, to, to be voiced, uh, please. But let's do a quick go round and wrap up. I'm I'm concerned about primarily about how we can help. Nepal, we have ICANN, the organization ICANN, and please check out nuclearban.us, uh, Timmins' website. They have so much information to help us all, help you, and help you plug into us. But I really uh, value developing these bridges, these ties, um, and I hope we continue in the struggle. It's a challenge. We have a challenge. We need you to help us, and hopefully we can help you. Uh, but so Timon or whoever would like to go next with last thoughts and I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce Danya Vada. Uh, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, someone help Vicky with how do you say uh, thank you? Kamal, how do you say thank you in Nepalese? We greet by Namaste and we say we accept thank you by namaste. Namaste. No, namaste. <laughs> namaste. namaste. I'm, I'm saluting that in you, which is divine. Um, I, I just want to thank you all so much for, uh, for working on this together. And there is hope. And we are going to keep working on this until it is done. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And thanks for thanks for for having us uh, as part of this. You know, we're we're excited to continue the conversation. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Loni, uh, Professor Loni, former ambassador, he wanted to add something. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Uh, okay. Please, uh, Professor Loni, unmute yourself. Unmute. Oh, uh, you have to unmute. Sorry. Unmute. Unmute. unmute, unmute, unmute. unmute Thank you. I see Mary oh, there. Oh. Please, please unmute, uh, Dr. Loni, unmute. All right. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Now, yes. Yes, sir. yes, I was telling one thing always that always baffles me is the contradictions in the behavior of uh, nuclear weapon state, which are also now five permanent members of the UN Security Council. Now, they are in possession of these weapons and they continue to urge others uh, to... Uh, to, to avoid making bomb the weapons or to go in for nuclear program. What do you think? You know, is it not this contradiction, uh, something really, really baffling? Why, why are one, you know, countries like US, US uh, of course not USSR, the Russian Federation, UK, France, and China. Why, do this, why should they consider themselves privileged enough to, 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 let, to keep intact their weapons? Um, and to go on manufacturing more arsenals, more bombs, and and then sermonizing others, urging others not to go in for these weapons. What kind of behavior is this? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Last words, uh, Naranjan. Uh, just uh, thank you very much. I, I hope is if there's anything else that you'd like to have covered or I, I, I welcome your thoughts or your roundup here. Uh, yeah, US, uh, I think uh, uh, United States uh, and uh, like we have a uh, experience in CTBT, CTBT has not gone into effect. I mean, uh, not in uh, force. So because of eight countries, 36 countries uh, have already, uh, this uh, threshold countries have already ratified, but eight countries uh, which have not ratified are China, India, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel, Iran, Egypt, and the US. 
So these countries, uh, we have to think about these countries also in terms of our experience with the CTBT. But at least CTBT has created one organization called uh, CTBTO, CTBT organization that is based in Vienna. <laughs> and that, is, that is monitoring the nuclear test. And they have a, in uh, about uh, 89 countries, they have uh, some centers monitoring it. Like uh, earthquake is being monitored by some, uh, some places. So uh, uh, the nuclear test is also being monitored. So in 2006, when North Korea exploded the nuclear bomb, at that time it was registered, you know, in, uh, in Vienna. So that is also a good thing that if uh, some countries are, uh, new countries are going to test, uh, then we will, uh, the countries uh, party to the convention of CTBT, they will uh, immediately know what is happening. So that I wanted to add, thank you. Thank you. So I, I would like to leave uh, just the, uh, I feel very blessed to have your presence. I feel honored and uh, to make this connection. If I could ask uh, both you, Kamal and, and Ranjan, uh, to keep us posted, um, keep me posted and I'll, I'll keep Tim and posted on the questions that come up, the concerns that come up in uh, from that you hear if you're hearing from parliament, the draw, you know, whatever their, their challenges are, or what the wall that they're going up against, uh, if there are things that are preventing Nepal, if we can help in any way support or help round out a good argument, uh, that's both Tim and I and many of us here that we spend our days trying to, uh, get to the reason behind things and uh so and and we know we can do this and we know it's time for this to happen time to get rid of this huge cost this tremendous threat to all humanity uh we know it's in our nature and the buddha nature and christ nature to do this work as well uh and our, our love for each other our love for humankind so please let's keep each other abreast and Keep keep me posted on what you're hearing from, uh, and we'll get it, everyone to perhaps, perhaps back together again in a couple of months, or if needed and if wished, maybe a little more organized, and uh, that that's possible. Okay, Anthony, we'll do that, and we will be you know uh, uh, making aware of our government bureaucrats and politicians uh, regarding this issue. And uh, we will uh, we'll be pushing them uh, to ratify as soon as possible. I think, uh, you know, our parliament go is going to convene within uh, two to three weeks time. Uh, uh, it has been uh, not in uh, session uh, for about six months now. So it will, uh, it will be uh, sitting uh, now within two to three weeks time and then uh, something we will we will push at that time. Thank you, and we'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Tim and Vicky. Just a minute. Can we make a small request before we will wrap up? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I have a feeling that this seminar by itself has been successful, but we could have been better if we had planned little better and informed people later better. So. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the people like, for example, former defense minister uh, of Nepal, uh, Vimsan Das, uh, das uh, Pradhan had assured me he will join us. And people, uh, some, some other parliamentarians had uh, told me they will join us. Mm -hmm. But all I informed them only about 24 hours or less. Yes. And I, I have a feeling they couldn't. Mm -hmm accommodated in their schedules because they are already committed months in advance or weeks in advance. So my suggestion at the end would be, Anthony uh, and Timon, that we should have one more session after a good preparation. And you, we would appreciate if you can project your slides also to drive certain points so that the Nepalese public would get clearer pictures of your activities. And then our parliamentarians planners, decision makers, etc., would have better input. 
and to take better initiative in, in the coming days. Thank you. I welcome your suggestion and I look forward to hearing from you about that. Sure. And we also and, have recorded this, this session too, if you want to share it. No, Thank recording is good enough, but and maybe we can work on the answers of some of the questions raised. But my suggestion is we need certainly a second session in near future. After, um, of course, good planning. Yeah, after 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 the two weeks uh, would be great. After Parliament gets in there, and if they take this up, please keep your ear open for what what's getting in the way or what the questions are. And I think we will come in to support. And I, I agree, better planning, and we'll get a nice logo or something for you. Yep, a, a flyer. Yep. Thank you very much. Very constructive. God bless you and Namaste. 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 Namaste.